Praise the Lord. I, down, I look down at my Bible and it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Actually, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Yeah, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Very great, thou art cloaked. We'll try that one more time. It shows you how sick I am. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariots, who walks upon the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hastened away. You know, some people often read Psalms or read some declaration about God, and they think, oh, that's beautiful symbolism. How beautiful. Some other people read it and they go, oh, what an allegory. Me, I read it and I go, wow, what a God. <laughs> because I take it literal. No offense to anybody that might be out there thinking it's spiritual or allegorical or symbolic or a simile or a metaphor. But frankly, I think I've seen God a little more than they have. <laughs> if they think that it's only one of those things that I just said because I've seen God <laughs> high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and uh, to put it bluntly he does do these things <laughs> so I don't know you know <coughs> I kind of get blessed by that because when I'm sick or when I'm healthy when I'm down or when I'm up when I'm all around the town though no <laughs> then I know that I can turn to God and realize that there is a greater glory to be revealed that yet people have not seen that maybe I've experienced a little bit in part. And sometimes I, I have to remind them that, hey, you know, we serve a big God. Because <laughs> they tend to put God down without meaning to. I mean, it's not like they're disrespectful. They're just not much experienced with God, I guess. Because once you've experienced some of these miraculous things, you kind of take less interest in the practical things because you know that what's going on up there is a whole lot bigger than what's going on down here. This is kind of like being in the sewer of God's experience. Seriously. Where you're at right now is probably the sewer where you're just bringing everyone out of the muck and the guck and the the cesspool of life to the reality of existence that God has in creation for all of us yet to be revealed because you see you're kind of like still dealing in the world in its ways and we're just trying to pull people out of the the sewer and say come over here you know you need to get a little cleaned up because thou stinketh you got stinking thinking you got messed up ideas you kind of don't realize that what you think of as a wonderful world is really playing in the gutter. It's living in the sewer. And you need to come out of that cesspool existence and move into the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then you begin to see the light. And wow, what a world God has created that's greater than the one that you see. Sometimes I am blessed. I, while I was gone, most of my plants died, by the way. <laughs> Maybe not most, but I'd say about a quarter of them. Kind of, poof, they got <coughs> blasted by the sun. And the person taking care of them did the best they could, but they really didn't know how. And That's kind of what happens when you don't know what you're doing. Something comes along that wipes out what you were doing. So you kind of need to have people that know what they're doing do what they know what to do. And that's why I share what I do about God. I share those things that have worked 
in my life, the things that are true to my personal experience with God, the things that I have seen with my own eyes, the things that I have heard with my own ears, the things that I have handled with my own hands, the things that have been real in my life. Not some metaphor, some simile, or some allegory, or some story that could be made up by any fiction writer, but the reality of God's existence in my life. And because it's real, I testify to you and tell you the truth. Jesus not only is coming, but Jesus is real. Jesus lives in me. Even sick and full of snot and full of all this wow. Jesus is alive. Jesus is coming again. You know, and every day that I get healthier, I look around and I see the peace that God wants me to teach about the joy that God wants me to communicate that isn't this joy that I see right now in the Christian world of like dancing and jumping and shouting and screaming you know and getting this soulful experience overboard but the joy that is a long slow burn that continues to just glow and glow and glow until you know that your very atoms and portals of your skin are about to just fall away and shed themselves for the glory of your spirit that's just going to rise out of this cocoon that has to leave behind the caterpillar you were to become the butterfly that you are amazing isn't it what God has in store for you that you shall become the butterfly of his transformation that he is taking you from glory to glory into the image of the incorruptible Son of God oh, I can't wait can you death where is thy sting oh God how far have thou passed away that you have placed the fear of life and death away from me that I should be mindful of those things that I have yet to just open up and realize as you take for me the glory of this day and bring to me your way. Oh God, not my way, but thy way and thy will be done. For surely this is the day, this is the day, is it not, that we could stop Be still. Listen and hear God speak.